Hey everybody, Andrew Hogue here, your security, privacy, and forensics expert. Today we're gonna to talk about the differences between source code and binary analysis for software build materials. This topic also applies more broadly to security analysis in general. So let's dive right in. You can follow along with everything on my website, Don't Panic. Just go out to andrewhogue.com, click on blog, and then click on the source code versus binary analysis for SBOMs. So the first thing we wanna talk about are what are the different types of analysis you can do to develop a software build material? There's source code analysis and binary analysis. Source code analysis is pretty straightforward, exactly like it sounds. You have tools that will read the source code that you've written and try to determine what your direct and indirect dependencies are. One of the really great things about source code analysis is that you get really great version information because you have all of that dependency information right there in front of you. So tools are able to read various manifest files, pom.xml, or even run tools like Gradle or Maven to complete a build process and determine your dependencies. Now, generally speaking, source code analysis is a static process. And static processes are a lot easier than dynamic because by their nature, there shouldn't really be any moving parts. But of course, that runs us into our first real issue with modern software development. Compiling software into a binary that can run on multiple platforms is no small feat. To deal with these complexities, software platforms and developers have built build tools which can pull in different dependencies, compile target outputs in different formats, and generally make the development process easier. But of course, that no longer means we're dealing with static values, we're dealing with the output from complex tools or dynamic values. And that really complicates our ability to develop a comprehensive software bill of materials just through source code analysis. So the first challenge is with transitive dependencies. When we talk about software bill of materials, there are direct dependencies and indirect or transitive dependencies. The direct dependencies are pretty straightforward. As a developer, you may say, hey, I need to include Crashlytics or Mixpanel or some other third-party library that you want to use to enhance the functionality of your app. Now, those SDKs actually include their own dependencies. And when you're looking at your source code, you may not have visibility into what Crashlytics or anybody else includes in their SDK. Those are considered indirect or transitive dependencies, but they're really, really important to the security of your application. In the tutorial that we'll run through later today, I'll show you how source code analysis misses important transitive dependencies like OpenSSL. And the ones that are included in the debug version of this app have eight known vulnerabilities, two of them being scored greater than a 7.0. The second major challenge to source code analysis is that you don't always have access to the source code. In the previous Crashlytics example, you won't have access to the Crashlytics source code, so you can't inspect the dependencies of Crashlytics and understand all of the transitive dependencies. But as we look more broadly at the security use case, you're not just always looking at the apps that you build, but also the apps you use. And that's going to be a lot of apps for most companies and enterprises. So how can you get a software build materials for the apps that you use if you don't have their source code? One thing of course would be relying on the industry to provide them, but today we're pretty early in that process and many companies are struggling with providing up-to-date software build materials for their apps. A really great example of why this is important is in the Log4j vulnerability that came out in December 2021. Shortly after it was announced, certs began to see active attacks against their honeypots, so they knew that this was going to be exploited in the wild. That sent security teams scrambling to quickly identify all software within their enterprise that's using Log4j, and that's no small feat. Many organizations weren't able to do this and had to try to rely on their vendors or other techniques to protect their company. In the midst of this incident, Rob Joyce, the director of cybersecurity for the NSA, put out a really compelling tweet that shared both the Geardra software that they built is vulnerable and how important it is for organizations to be able to leverage software build materials to quickly identify dependencies within their enterprise and get those remediated. This is where binary analysis can really shine. One of the great things about binary analysis is you're actually operating on the software that you're using. So even if you don't have full visibility into who compiled it or how they compiled it, 
What you do know is, is this application is specifically being run in your organization and you can scan that application to try to understand all of its dependencies. This is really interesting for mobile apps because there's millions and millions of mobile apps. They get updated very frequently and they're also self-contained applications in the sense that they bundle up their code and their third-party code and push that out to the app stores and ultimately to the devices. But just like source code analysis has challenges, so does binary analysis. Probably the biggest issue that we run into with binary analysis is the lack of version information. Compilers often strip version information from binaries in order to either streamline the process or remove dependency information in case it could be used against somebody. This of course is a huge problem because while it's great to know you have OpenSSL in your application, you don't want to send your development team scrambling if it's not the vulnerable version of OpenSSL. One of the other challenges with binary analysis is you don't necessarily always get really great dependency tree information. So understanding which component included another component, which included a third or even more components after that. So we can scan an application, look at all the different namespaces, and oftentimes infer not only the SDK, but also determine the version of the SDK. But that nested list of dependencies that you can get through package managers like NPM and Yarn is far more challenging to come across when you're using just binary analysis. Like all things security, sometimes the best answer is a combination of multiple things. In the end, there's no perfect solution here. Source code analysis is great because you can get great version information uh, about the dependencies that are directly included into your app. Um, and you can generate those very quickly and generally very easily, although the tooling out there isn't so great. But we miss super important transitive dependencies. And you don't always have access to your source code. So how can you go out there as a security professional and assess the risk of your company to, let's say, some ODA that just dropped? And that's where binary analysis will really shine. I think in the perfect world, we'd go ahead and combine these two things together and then make that available. I don't know of any tool that's doing that today, but that's certainly something that's top of mind for me. And I'd love to hear back from you guys to get your thoughts and experiences if you're working with software bill materials. So I hope you found this session useful. I can't wait to get the next ones out there. I'd love any feedback you have in the comments. Just let me know what you're thinking, if you've got recommendations, if you found different tools or techniques that worked. Until next time.